Hi, this is Cyprian from fu for all and this is the third tutorial that I'm doing about Salmis CFD and Code Saturn. And in this tutorial, we'll have a look at how to build this simple junction model uh, and how... Uh, so this simple junction is a model in which you have an inlet and you have an outlet and the water enter from here and goes by, uh, goes out of this area. Uh, and uh, kind of new stuff that I'm showing to you is also temperature. So I will introduce a temperature scalar uh, defined that will show the spread of temperature like this. So this is temperature. Um, so when it starts actually it's like that because the initial temperature will be 20 degree and the fluid which is starting to flow inside will be at 300 uh, degrees Celsius. So you'll see the equilibrium of the temperature scalar in the, inside the model. Okay, so let's start with a new. So let's save that and let's start with a new project. And basically, let's uh, go into my geometry module in which I will start to build this geometry. So, how to start with the geometry? So geometry is basically composed of two blocks. Um, so I can use this function, block. Um, so the dx and dy. So in y direction, this model will be three meter. So I suppose this is meter units, right? Um, and 0 0.1, 0 0.1 apply and close let's uh, let's look closer so this is the first cube second second model will be second cube will be in x direction 0 0.6 uh, z direction 0 0.1 and 0 0.5 in y direction okay like that a box now I will use a transform function to move this box here. So operation translation. So in X I want minus 0 0.6 and in uh, Y direction should be 2. So the model will move here also. 0 0.5 sorry, like that. So it should, be, should have an intersection between the two. And I'll uncheck to create a copy so it will directly move my part. Okay, now we need to fuse those two. And for that, let's go into operation. So there is something called fuse, but that's not the one that is the most useful actually. The one useful is partition. So, and what I have to do is select those two and just click apply and close and now I'm getting a partition so it's it's basically um, it's the same model except that I have everything in one model and the faces and all have been intersected so it will be much easier after to do the meshing so next step create the groups of the geometry so group create group surface group so I need one group for the inlet. So let's call that inlet. I need one group for the outlet. Outlet. Apply. I need uh, some group for the walls here. So those will be the walls, and I need some group for uh, both faces for the symmetry. So if you're wondering how I'm selecting several faces, I'm just pressing the, the shift key on my keyboard, and I'm pressing control to rotate. Add all that. 
this will be symmetry. Symmetry. Okay. I'll play close. Okay. Now I have my uh, main model, my geometry faces, my groups, and I still need to have uh, edge groups for the meshing. So to do that, I use operation blocks propagate. And I will generate some compounds of edges like that. So the best way is to rename those um, in the right way. So let's have a look. Compound sex. So this is the group in. Let's move a bit the mall so it's easier to see. So this is y direction. So I will call that y1. Uh, let's say y dear one. Right. Okay. This one is uh, y dear three. Y dear three. And this one, this one here, this is x, x dear, and let's call it x dear two. You'll see that this work you're doing by renaming here uh, will make you gain a lot of time afterwards. So that's that's pretty important. This will be x dear one. This one here is, um, this will be y dear 2. And this here, this I will call, last one will be thickness, simply. So I'll have only one element in the thickness because I'm modeling a 2D model like I did in the previous uh, model, previous tutorials. Okay, so I built the edges, I have the geometry groups, now I, I can go, let's save that first, and I'll, let's create a new folder, simple junction, always a good practice to save your model before uh, some problem ha occur, let's save that, now let's go in the SMesh module. And let's start to mesh this. So there are several ways to mesh this, but I'll try to, to be efficient and to show you the best way I found uh, to get a nice mesh. So the first thing is let's create a mesh partition for, for the full partition. 3D hexahedron IGK, 2D quadruple mapping, 1D wire discretization and I'll use um, local lens default local lens right apply let's just compute to have a look what it would give me oh yeah that's it so of course this mesh will not work much too coarse so next step is to refine this using those geometry uh, group and edges so let's add some mesh. So let's select the thickness, for example, and wire discretization, number of segment, and there will be only one segment in the thickness. So this one is okay. Done. Um, this here, so this is y dear three, right? So y dear three should have number of segments of 50 so let's let's call it 50 here too so I I can fi find out afterwards apply those two will have I think 20 segments each so let's let's do them separately why dear one number of segment 20. Apply and Y dear two will have also the same. Okay. Now this one is X dear one. So X dear one into and this I think X dear one should have ten elements. Number of segments ten. Uh, 
at um, and for the x dear or oh, was it x dear one that I chose let, let me let me compute that to, to check because sometimes oh. okay so there is there is I think some kind of um, some kind of problem somewhere so I chose that this was cool this was cool this is okay too okay uh, I didn't define this one yet thickness Ah, okay yeah I think associated why let me check my summer here oh yeah where the one it was where why there are two that I, sh I should have chosen here so let's edit that and instead of this okay let's just delete this sub mesh okay let's do again this one y dear 2 uh, x dear 2 sorry x dear 2 y a discretization and this should have 10 segments apply let's check okay now this is what I wanted now um, this part here I didn't mesh it yet so I want a gradual um, gradual increase in the mesh size here so and this time it's x there one y discretization and I should use arithmetic progression let's check that my edges are all in the same uh, side uh, uh, in the same direction sorry so they all here go pointing in the same direction that, that's fine otherwise you'll have to activate this option and change the direction of some of the edges 0 0.1 0 0.01 let's say okay let's merge that and see the difference nice it works perfect okay now my geometry my mesh is almost ready so I need to create the mesh groups mesh create groups from geometry let's select my groups okay inlet outlet walls and symmetry um, and now the only thing remaining is to export the mesh so what I'll do is that I'll first create the CFD case and then I'll come back and export in export the mesh right into the mesh folder created so CFD study let's create a new case so yeah in this directory let's call it junction this will be my case one okay now this creates um, some some files here and I'll, now I come back to the mesh module and I directly export in met format into my mesh folder okay I come back to CFD and if I have a look here I have it into the mesh folder which is what I wanted so let's unroll uh, the menu and right click in Saturn GUI launch the GUI to open my my CFD study in which I will uh, start setting up my model uh, for the CFD let's select the mesh first okay just added that to my menu so sometimes again um, if you watch my press tour you know I have some problem with the GUI here 
Okay, so I, I'm in the pre-processing mode. Let's go in the post-processing mode now to uh, set up the physics of this. So first thing, what do I want to calculate? I want to calculate study flow and um, I will add a thermal model. So I want to add a thermal scalar temperature defined in Celsius. That's it. Now I need to, let's do that immediately after uh, I created the physics. Let's initialize my um, velocity and thermal. So my temperature should be at the beginning of my study. I want it to be 20 degree everywhere. So I'll just change the initial value here to 20. And the initial velocity um, I'll put inside here will be zero. Okay. Let's define my, um, my fluid. So fluid property. And here I'll use a fluid which is slightly heavier than what I had before with just uh, water. Um, so let, let me just look at my notes. What were the values for this? Um, yeah, got it. 725.5. Seven thirty-five. So this will be the density. The viscosity we will be eight point nine five one minus five. The specific heat. So here the specific heat is important because I have some thermal calculation, and thermal conductivity will be like that. Just leaving it like that. Let's save all that. Uh, again, after saving, sometimes I change again the menu. No problem. Now, um, I need, so there is no gravity. I need to define the boundary condition. So let's define the boundary conditions. And as I have my mesh groups into my, uh, my Salome uh, wall tree here, let's just add them. Oh, you have to select one by one. What? Not working? Uh, sorry. Okay, so this is a great opportunity to show you another method to do that. So in case this doesn't work like, like here, there is another way to actually associate the boundary condition. So this way, what you can do is go back in the pre-process mode. And what I'll do is that I will calculate the mesh quality criteria. Ah, need to save. So this is just to basically to save some indicators about the mesh. So very fast, I calculate that. And if I open my, my folder where I save my model, you see that in the resu folder, I have quality and I have something called, I think this one, preprocessor log. So I can, maybe I can open it to show you. So in this one, I have some details about mesh groups and boundary conditions and all, all the stuff. So this, what can be done is that if I come back to this mode, and the definition of boundary region. There is here import groups and references from preprocessor listing. So that's what I just done. So I just click here and I'll select this file preprocessor log. And if a uh, yeah, and it automatically added the boundary conditions uh, from my Salome window. Now. Another thing you could do, which, um, well, if you have only four boundary conditions, it's easy to do. If you have more, uh, that would be more problematic. But what you can do is just add it here, a new one, 
and here and this selection criteria just give it the name of your boundary condition so here I call it inlet I can write inlet and it will automatically select it in my mesh if uh, and if I want to select two types of boundary condition at the same time I can use inlet and outlet for example some logical operators to couple things and I can even use some kind of uh, Python function so uh, I don't remember exactly how it works but I, I, I know you can define a you can select a boundary condition and only in between x uh, when x is in between a certain value 0 and 0 1 or something so you have some some ways to do that so here I just don't need it I just delete so now let's double click symmetry okay have it the world is wall outlet is outlet and inlet is inlet right okay and now let's give it some boundary conditions inlet so velocity will be let's specify in one meter per per second in x direction and go down um, turbulence oh yeah I forgot um, let's the let's change the turbulence model to turbulence let's use k epsilon for this uh, okay come back inlet um, and for the turbulence I'll use a hydraulic diameter of 0 0.5 meter so this will be used for the calculation of the turbulence model and here the thermal condition at the inlet will be 300 degree that's where you basically tell that the fluid you input will have a temperature of 300 degrees Celsius now let's look at um, the outlet I'll just leave it like that prescribe outgoing flux and the walls will be yeah I think that's that's the right setting okay so let's go into numerical parameters um, so equation global nothing to change here so you should yeah simple C by default should be that equation parameters here resolver and scheme I will just leave it like this and here and clipping there is uh, some change um, by default temperature is just defined bet between minus uh, 273 and very very high value so I know this value of temperature is only between 20 and 400 so if I set up this option in the clipping if I get results higher than that it will automatically be uh, removed uh, because you know the solver will suppose that there is some kind of numerical problem or error and it will clip those higher values so that's it uh, pseudo time step so 0, 01 second let's use 300 iterations um okay maybe higher time step 0 0.9 i think it should work now let's define the outputs um output control let's go into mesh writer i'll use the n-site format oh and here this is important frequency if you don't select this it will only uh, export the late latest result at the end of calculation if you want a result at each cal calculation step you have to check that i'll put every n time steps now I have 300 time step this will be a bit too much to export at every time step so I'll export every 10 time step let's say um, and that should be good to go um, monitoring point well I, I could define also a monitoring point but don't really need it for this so I'll just I don't you saw in the previous tutorial how to do this so this one will be like this volume control make sure so here again it's hidden monitoring 
So I don't have monitoring, so I, I can actually act, unactivate all that. I don't need it. Um, so after that type of things I want to calculate, and I think I'm more or less ready to launch the calculation. So let's go in delay, prepare batch, batch calculation. Uh, also one note is that I'm using uh, code Saturn 5.2 if you have a you know newer version using 5.3, 5.4, something even uh, better, I think they have changed some options. So I think this calculation menu may have moved to a, another part. So you know, remember I'm using 5.2. But if you're using uh, the Ubuntu version I showed to you in the previous tutorial, you should have the same thing than me. But you know, in case you're not using the same code set and version, you may have sm some uh, small differences. Okay, I'll just use one processor, one thread. Let's start the calculation. Okay, always save that. And uh, let's hope that it will work. Ah, okay, so now I get a problem. Mm -hmm. Error in calculation stage. Check code set and listing and error file for details. Okay, so I. I I think I forgot something somewhere. So if you get something like that, you'll probably get something like that. Go into go into your um, resu. So what you just calculate is here, and you should have a FACOL listing that. Uh, okay, so I can open it from my folder browser. Listing. Let's have a look what's not right. So, and generally, it should be written what is going wrong here. Um, some binary condition definitions are incomplete or incorrect. Okay, so the problem is on my binary conditions somewhere. So let's let's check that. Let's go back on my boundary conditions. So I have uh, four boundary conditions. Should be okay. Now, inlet. So inlet. Okay, temperature, prescribed values, outlet. Temperature and the wall value. I think this all looks okay. Yeah, this all look okay. So the problem is probably that I forgot one of the faces of this um, to select one of the faces. So let's go back to my mesh and let's have a look at those uh, faces. So as I told you, always check that. I forgot to do it. My fault. So inlet. Okay. Good. Outlet. Good. Symmetry, good. Walls, ah, okay, these small faces here. I forgot to select this one. So that's that's the problem. So one of the faces is not defined uh, in here. So let's correct that. So let's go back to my mesh. Let's go back to my walls let's I think there's it oh there is an edit group so I can actually add this face yeah so now now if I come back to my mesh hmm, I guess I have to redefine this this walls group so I'll delete this one Yes, and I'll again create group from geometry, mesh one, walls, apply. Now it's selected. Um, I should re export the mesh. Don't forget this step.
All right. And now let's try again. Run. To run again on my simulation. Hoping that this time it will work. And save that. Oh, and it works great. Okay, so now I got my results, which are also here. So this this is you see that now I have my results.case that I can open with Paravis. So let's go into Paravis and let's open this um, this result. Uh, this one. Okay. Apply. So again, I have to use a special filter to extract those results. So extract block. Apply. Ah, oh, free domain. Apply. So now I'm getting. Uh, I'm getting the pressure. I'm getting the temperature, which is cool. Um, so it means that I did everything correctly. Let's create another filter for cell data to point data. I prefer to do it like this. Let's have a look at the velocity. So if you want to see, because I exported at, you know, you remember, 10, uh, every 10 time steps, well, pseudo time steps. So you have animation view here that if you don't have it, you can activate it in, in, in the view windows. Um, click on the plus to activate this. And now I'm able to play the animation. So it doesn't actually change at the beginning. And I think that because I should have exported a bit more than just 10, um, 10 results. So we don't see actually the, the change. So let, let's quickly go back into CFD study. Let's go into, into what was it? Output control, writer, and let's, well, let's, let's try every time step. Yeah, every time step. Let's recalculate. Okay. Let's open again my new results. And add my filter. And my second filter. So th this filter thing sometimes can be annoying. Um, so what I did in the past is that I created a macro to, to do that automatically. Um, maybe I'll show that in the next video. Anyway, now I created this. So let's hide this one and uh, sell the point data. And let's have a look at temperature. Okay, so now if I look at step by step, you see that I'm able to view how the temperature actually um, propagates a long time. Well, so at the beginning, at the beginning, uh, everything is at 20 degree, this fluid is at uh, 300 degree, and then, and then uh, it slowly start to feel and the temperature uh, start to change all over uh, this. Now um, I'll show you one last thing. So this is temperature. Let's look at the velocity. Velocity at the start. And uh, there is, if you want to show the arrows, you know, the flow lines, there is a filter called uh, glyph 
that will uh, help you to do this. So extra uh, the filter should should be called glyph. Yeah, glyph. Apply that, and now you can see the arrows. So the scale factor is a bit high. Um, zero point zero. I don't know. Zero three. Oh, uh, it's too small. Okay. And now I'm able to view the fluid. And I think if I animate all that, I'll see the vectors changing in position. Yes. A long, a long time. So this is all going steady state. So it's actually starting and taking the same position. Okay, and this concludes this uh, third tutorial of Salmi CFD. So I hope it was useful for you to show you how uh, the, to add a temperature scholar and all the stuff. And um, I'll see, I'll do more uh, more things in the next tutorial. So we'll see when I publish the next one. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, um, subscribe to my channel, post some comments, uh, let me know what you want to see. And thank you very much for watching. Uh, goodbye. Have a nice, uh, have a nice weekend if it's the weekend for you. Goodbye. So if you're on YouTube, you'll probably find the link to the article and the next videos inside the description. Otherwise, you can go on my blog fe4all.com uh, and click in the category open source FEA, and you'll find all the articles. I wrote about uh, open source FEA and the previous videos inside this category. So thank you for watching. I hope that you learned a lot and that you will learn a lot using all the videos that I am sharing on my blog. So if you like those videos, please help me to share them with your friends and other engineers. And also please let me know what you think in the comments. It's always great to have some kind of feedback and if you have some ideas of things you would like to learn or do with FEA, please also let me know. Thank you for watching again.